Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome to, what's this, week four, lesson one of five. Um, I'm going to pretty much continue where I left off last week. So um, similar kind of standard of, of maths, maybe a little bit more difficult. Um, I may have to kind of go backwards on some questions in order for us to all move forwards, but um, obviously I'll explain that process as I get to it. So um, as per last week, in a moment, the questions will crop up. Pause it. Give it a good go. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, just write the question and then leave a good, you know, a good kind of three or four um, lines in order to write some good quality notes that enable you to start to be independent tomorrow and, and, and kind of over the next few days. Um, this morning, um, I'm about to kind of go off in the garden, do a bit of exercise with the kids and my wife. Um, a, a, bit, a bit of a precarious pair of Reeboks, these ones. I like them, but you have to be really careful where you wear them. They're kind of fabric here, they're fabric here, obviously the laces. Um, any kind of dirt on these or any kind of water, it's, it's not good. So always consider, consider that when you're buying trainers, where you're gonna wear them. This is kind of like a summer pair only. As you can see, I've not touched the laces out of the box. Happy days. Right, questions coming up now, go. Okay, so question one was 50% of 480. Well, 50% is a half, okay? So basically, all we need to do is 480 divided by two. Now, there's two ways you can do that. Um, you can, well, what's half of 400? 200. What's half of 80? 40. So your answer would be 240, okay? Very straightforward. Or you could have done it as a bus stop. 480 divided by 2, 2's into 4 go 2, 2's into 8 go 4, 2's into 0 go 0, 240. Okay, same way of doing it, uh, same answer, two different ways of doing it. Okay, common sense or bus stop method, either one. Okay, so 50% means a half. Okay, 25% um, would be a quarter, which find a quarter, you half it and half it again. Question two, uh, round 2,658, uh, 2,658, uh, what's it, what's it to, to the nearest 10. So, where are my tens? Well, these are my thousands, these are my hundreds, these are my tens, aren't they? Okay, these are my tens, these are my units. So I've got thousands, hundreds, tens and units. So, it's the tens I'm interested in. And what's it followed by? It's followed by an eight. Remember the rule of rounding. If this is a five or higher, this rounds up. So your answer is going to be 2,660. Okay, to the nearest 10. Nearest 10 means I'm going to have no units. Okay, they're going to be zero. If it was to the nearest 100, it would mean the, um, the tens of units would be zero. Nearest 1,000, you have zero for your hundreds and tens and your units. Okay, the other way of considering this Here's my tens, 50, 8. Is that close to 50 or 60? Well, it's close to 60, isn't it? So 2,660. I always like to employ a little bit of common sense in maths. Um, I think as a non-subject specialist, it's something which I relied upon. I think a lot of the students in my classes appreciate it as well. I try not to take kind of certain things for granted. Um, round £6.37, uh, sorry, 6.37, to one decimal place, so 6.37 to one decimal place. So there's my first decimal place, and there's the second. So again, this one dictates what this one does. Because it's higher than a five, this rounds up, 6.4, okay? The other way, looking at it, a bit like the question before, is 37 closer to 30 or 40? It's closer to 40, but I don't put the four the zero, the 40, so it only wants one decimal place, so I don't need anything there. Okay, one decimal place, 6.4. Okay, remember two decimal places would be kind of 5.86. Okay, 5.86, there's one, two decimal places. That's three decimal places. That's four decimal places. That would be five decimal places. 
Okay, that's what decimal place means, in case you weren't exactly sure. Uh, work out 10 add 6 times 2. 10 add 6 times 2. So remember, what part of this do we need to do first? We need to do the multiply, because remember bid mass. Brackets, indices, divide and multiply, add and subtract. There's no brackets, there's no indices, but divide and multiply, I've got to multiply, so I need to do that first. So it becomes 10 add 6 times 2 is 12. 10 out of 12 is 22. Okay, and bid mass doesn't just apply when it says this topic is bid mass. Bid mass applies to every single um, method, every single topic. Okay, so my saying is don't be a Colin. And if you're in my class, you'll know what that means. And a certain young man, um, his name is now Colin. I renamed him. So his parents know. Um, what's next? List the first eight square numbers. So a square number is a number that's been multiplied by itself. So you've got one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared, six squared, seven squared, and eight squared. So one squared means one times one, which is one. Two squared means two times two, which is four. Three squared means three times three, which is nine. Four squared means four times four, which is 16. Five squared means five times five, which is 25. Six squared means six times six equals 36. You get on going this now, yeah? Seven squared means seven times seven, which is 49. And eight squared, eight times eight, which is 64. So your answers are, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and 64. Hello, Poppy, how are you? Poppy's come to do some maths. Hello, Pop. The training's going well, isn't it, Poppy? You're a good girl. You're a good girl, aren't you? Lovely girl. Right. We managed to get her crate as far as the landing. She's been with us five weeks. She was meant to spend two weeks in the bedroom. Um, she's now, uh, well, she's there for five weeks. So we now managed to move it to the landing, which is progress. Meeting mud. Ugh. Yuck. Um, right. Um, where are we at? 38 times 40. So 38 times 40. Um, you can do this in a common sense if you want. If you do 38 times 10, and then times that by four, so 380 times four. And for example, so that can be 1200, 1520 maybe, something like that, I'm not sure. Right, let's work it out. Um, so we're gonna have 38 times 40. So I use our tried and tested, tested method. Oh, that is shocking, isn't it? There's me talking about setting the standard, and I'm sure the old uh, writing like that. Okay, so to put my diagonals in, Okay, so um, 8 times 4, 32. 8 times 0 is 0. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 0 is 0. So, I've got a 0, I've got a 2, I've got a 5, and I've got a 1. 1,520, there you go. I said it was. Okay, happy with that? Okay, if your number bonds are good, and your times tables are good, there's a lot of maths you can do in your head. Having said that, if this was an exam, I would never say to do that in your head and put the answer. If you, and if you did, do it a second time using a method to check it. Okay, a couple of marks there, you don't want to miss out on them. Okay, next up is simplify the ratio. So simplify what have I got, uh, 24 to 18. So simplify means present it in, it in its smallest form. Okay, so I need to see if I can divide both of these by the same number. Now I can look at those um, and say, well, I could divide them both by, is it 24 to 18, is that question? Yeah, I could divide them both by six. Um, but actually I can see that it's an either even number. So I'm just gonna half them. Okay, so I'm just gonna divide them by two. So that becomes 12 to nine. 12 to nine. Well, three, six, nine, twelve. Three goes into both. So I'm going to divide them both by three. Four to three. 
So 12 to 18 can be simplified to 4 to 3. Okay, so it helps if you know what factors are. Okay, if you don't know what factors are, I'll tell you what, it's what I said earlier, we might need to go backwards in order to move forwards. If I said to you, you know, um, what are the factors of 24? Remember, factors are numbers, two numbers which multiply to make another number. So the factors of 24, the way we make 24, we can do it by doing 1 times 24. We can do it 2 times 12. Do it 3 times 8. We can do it 4 times 6. 5 doesn't go into it. 6, hang about. I've already got a 6, so now I can stop. So the factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Always do factors in pairs. Okay, that way you know you're not going to miss one. So 1 and 24, 2 and 12. And the next one, so the factors of 18 are 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. Okay, so the highest common factor there is 6. Okay, so if I divide these both by 6, I get 4 to 3. Okay, so if, you're, if you know factors and you can work, you know kind of what common factors are quickly in your head, you can just divide them straight away by the highest common factor. If not, it doesn't matter if you need to simplify by doing step, 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 step. Three or four steps sometimes, it doesn't matter. If you can't do it in one, one foul sweep, that does not matter. Um, what's next? What will be the first, uh, what will be the time 45 minutes after 2.20? So the time is 2.20. I know there's 60 minutes in an hour. So 45 minutes. So basically, I've got to do two, 20 past 2, add 45 minutes. Well, I know if I add 40 of those minutes, it gets me to 3 o'clock. Okay? So I've added the 40, but I still need to add my 5. So I get 3.05. Common sense. Okay? Being able to tell the time. Okay, so quite often with time, you, you get, you know, kind of get to the next hour and then add the minutes. Or if you wanted, you could have done 45 add 20 is 65. So you're adding an hour and five minutes. On to the uh, two o'clock. Right, work out 12.34 times 100. 12.34 times 100. Is that right? 12.34 times 100. Yeah, cool. Right, so, um, I mean, a real obvious way of doing this is whenever you times by 100, you move your decimal point two places. So if I've got 12.34 times by 100, I move it one, two places. So it becomes 1,234. Simple as that. Now, if you find things like this tricky, again, Mr. Virtue is kind of common sense maths. Um, well, think, what would 1 times 12.34 be? Well, 12.34 times 1 is 12.34. 10 times 12, okay, would be 12.34, uh, 12 be 123.4. Move it to there, wouldn't it? Therefore, 100, you must move it to there. Okay, so if you're not sure what it is, times it by 100, times it by 10. The other way, another common sense way, if I just said what's 12 times 100, okay, you'll know that that would be 1,200. And don't forget the 34, 1,234. Okay, so use some common sense and use the methods. If all else fails and you really kind of, your common sense evades you, Literally, do 12.34 times 100. Take the decimal points out, so it becomes one, so taking out two decimal points there, becomes 1,234 times 100, and you could do that like that if you needed to. Okay, if all else fails. Um, see, such a simple question, so many multi multitude of ways of, uh, of doing it, doing it correctly. Uh, simplify 3x add 2y, 3x add 2y minus x add 3y. So, simplify means you collect the like terms. Well, I've got x's and I've got y's. Remember, you always take the sign to the left. Positive 3y, negative x. And I like to personally just say that's an, there's only one x there, there's three y's there, there's one x there. So it helps you with your workings out if you just put a one next to it. So let's collect the x's. 
3x minus 1x. 3x minus 1x equals 2x. Let's do the y's. I've got a positive 2y. I've got a 2y. Add 3y equals 5y. So my answer is going to be 2x, and this is a positive 5y, so it's going to be plus 5y. Okay, right. Hopefully that went, went well for you. Um, make sure you've made really good quality notes. So any kind of workings I've done, um, you know, so for instance here, 3x, so you've got that's there and that's there, your y's, okay. Okay, make some good quality notes because you will need them tomorrow. Um, weather's not so great today. It's actually my daughter's birthday. She was two. Um, she was up about half five, quarter to six this morning. So we sung happy birthday to her. She kept going more and more and more. She was singing it to herself. So um, she got a bit, bit of a sore throat from singing happy birthday over and over again. And if you heard me sing, it's not pretty. So um, we've got a big chocolate cake. Hence why I'm going to go off and do some exercise now. Keeping that old dad bod at bay, as I keep telling you. Right, get that done. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you later.